that utilizing periodic intermittent fasting or low carb ketogenic diets for endurance work is really cool stuff. There's a lot of very compelling research out there surrounding it. And we're gonna cover it in this video. Plus, I'm gonna give you some simple tips that you can utilize to get the most out of your endurance work or your endurance competition. So we'll have some fun with it. Now, originally, this video was going to be created to talk about VO2 max and how a low carb, high fat diet affects your VO2 max. But upon diving into the research more, I realized that the studies that talk about low carb and VO2 max are a little bit confusing and they ultimately drive you in a big circle, and I'll explain why, because I still think it's imperative to share that data. Anyhow, we're going to have some fun with this. Hey, if you like this kind of content, if you're into low carb, you're into intermittent fasting, I think you're going to love this channel. So please do hit that red subscribe button, and then please hit that bell icon, select all notifications so you never miss our daily videos. Then after this video, uh, please check out Thrive Market down below in the description. Big thank you to Thrive Market for supporting this channel. They're an online membership-based grocery store, so you can get all your keto goods, all your intermittent fasting goods. I have grocery boxes with Thrive Market, so that means it's like you're going grocery shopping with me, where I can show you what to get, etc. Etc. I've created bundles and boxes that way. So highly recommend you check them out. Special link down below in the description after we get through this content. Okay, so the first thing I want to touch on is there was this landmark study that was published in the journal FASEB. Okay, and what it discovered was that ketones increase the hydraulic power of the heart by 25%. Now, at first glance, this sounds so unbelievably cool. If we increase the cardiac hydraulic power, that means we have 25% more blood that we're pushing through the body and therefore can improve our VO2 max. And it, it sounds like it sounds like we got the world by the tail when we look at this study. But then you look a little deeper. Ketones were used as a buffer along with glucose. And when they're used as a buffer, it means that you're not really getting the benefit from the ketones, you're getting the benefit from the fact that it's a buffer. In fact, when they added insulin as a buffer instead of ketones, there was the exact same 25% increase. So it's easy to cherry pick and say, oh, look, cardiac output increases or cardiac hydraulic power increases, but that's not really the case. However, there was something really, really, really interesting with the study. It found that when you combined insulin along with ketones, there was an increase of 36% in cardiac efficiency. Now, the problem is you can't naturally ever combine insulin and ketones. You can't consume carbohydrates and consume fats and create ketones and have an insulin spike at the same time. It's just impossible. However, there's some really interesting research that some universities are looking at right now with the use of exogenous ketones and the use of ketone esters so you can get the benefits of ketones along with carbohydrates. So you do have that insulin ketone combination. But anyway, we're gonna save that for another day when a lot of that research comes out. Point is, there's gonna be some cool stuff in the future with ketones and athletes. So let's jump back to VO2 max for a second. There was one study that showed that the ketogenic diet improves VO2 max quite significantly. But when you start looking into the data again, you see, oh, well, the subject lost a lot of weight. Okay, VO2 max, that number, that figure, that data is largely associated with the weight. Okay, if you decrease your body mass, then your VO2 max is gonna go up because it's related, it's relative to your weight. Okay, and since keto triggers weight loss, which by the way is very, very good for endurance athletes, it's gonna skew the data with VO2 max. So yes, people are losing weight and relatively speaking, their VO2 max is better. But let's not really go there. We can't really use that study. The thing is, VO2 max is largely anaerobic. So VO2 max is associated with more high intense aerobic work, or I shouldn't even say aerobic, but high intense cardiac work, right? Sprinting or rowing or something like that. And most people know that the ketogenic diet is not the best for that highly anaerobic activity. And VO2 max is associated, a good VO2 max is associated with high anaerobic threshold. So let's kind of throw that aside and not worry about it because we're looking at endurance and VO2 max doesn't matter as much. So there's a study that's published in the journal Metabolism. This is where things get really cool, okay? It demonstrated between looking at high carb, regular high carb athletes alongside keto adapted, fat adapted uh, athletes. And these were runners, right? So long distance uh, athletes. Okay, they found that the ketogenic group utilize 2.3 times more fat as a fuel source during their endurance work than the high carb group. Okay. Fat burns cleaner, okay. it has less overall oxidative stress on the body so you can recover faster, less overall lactate uh, buildup, overall it's just a better fuel for endurance work. Okay, here's the thing though, the really interesting part of this study was that 
the group that was eating the carbohydrates ended up no longer using fat for fuel once they got above 54.9% of their max intensity. Whereas the keto group was able to maintain fat utilization all the way up to 70.3% of their max intensity. What that means is that you're gonna get the better effect utilizing fats during endurance work. It's the way that it works. So if you can run or move at a higher intensity at a faster speed and still maintain fats as your fuel source before crossing into the carb territory, that's a big benefit. So if you have group A that is basically stuck at 55% because once they go over 55%, they start utilizing carbs, and you have group B that's on keto that can go up to 70% before they start using carbs, do the math of who's going to be able to go faster for longer, okay? Because they're never having to tap into their glycogen stores as much. They've got plenty of fat. So the ketogenic diet works tremendously well for aerobic activity. But here's where things get kind of interesting though, okay? You can have the best of both worlds if you allow yourself to get keto adapted. And there's not a lot of research out there on this yet because I don't think they've cared to look, but metabolic flexibility is where it's at. The mitochondria, the powerhouse within our cell, functions the best when it's very clearly either using carbs or using fats. The gray area is no fun. The gray area between carbs and fats, the mitochondria has antagonistic signaling pathways that are just fighting. Do I go fats? Do I go carbs? Do I go fats? Do I go carbs? If you develop the ability to be metabolically flexible, your body can shift between, oh, I'm burning glucose at this time, or oh, I'm burning fats at this time. Perfect example, you're going for a run on a straight flat piece of ground, and then all of a sudden you hit a hill. You hit that hill, you go anaerobic, you start tapping into carbohydrates. If you're metabolically flexible, your body will shift gears, it'll be a seamless switch of the gears. Think of it like this for a second. You have a train track and that train track has a fork in it. And you know those little dobbly boops that they use to like shift the train to go to one track or the other? Imagine that that little shifter thing is working so smoothly. It's got plenty of WD-40, plenty of grease, and it just goes, I'm burning fats, booms, burning carbs, makes it nice and smooth. Okay, now imagine that you're not metabolically flexible. It's more like this. It might get stuck in the middle and the train might fall off the rails and derail and just whatever. You see my point. And it's quite virtually just like that. It's pretty simple. We need our body to be fat adapted. The best way that you can do that is via fasting versus the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is great for endurance. Please don't get me wrong. I highly recommend you do it. But I do think that arguably longer fasts and doing your endurance work at the tail end of fasts could get you more metabolically flexible because that way your body is conditioned to use your own stored tissue. And then when you do eat, you can eat carbohydrates and your body still understands glucose metabolism and doesn't become glucose intolerant. So, ketogenic diet for the most part, but yeah, play around with fasting and implementation of carbs at the end of a fast. I can do more on that if you're interested. Feel free to comment down below and let me know if you wanna see that kind of content. Another fun thing that I recommend is I did a video on these green tea matcha fat bombs, and these are a perfect endurance snack. Okay, because you're using coconut oil, MCT, you're using matcha green tea, and the green tea has a double effect. It's anti-inflammatory, so it's gonna keep inflammation a little bit lower while you're doing a long endurance work, but it's also gonna have the caffeine, which is gonna help mobilize fatty acids and stimulate lipolysis, so therefore end up helping the fat get into the bloodstream so it can burn easier. And then of course you have the ketones or the fats, excuse me, that are gonna help generate ketones that are fairly easy to digest. I'll link out to that video so you can check it out because it's pretty straightforward. Anyhow, as always, thank you for keeping it locked in. Don't forget to check out Thrive Market, who's a big supporter of this channel down below, and I'll see you tomorrow.